I was gonna say, did you get your like raise yet or whatever? Yeah, I got that about two months ago. Well, I feel like it's been a while because the last time we talked, I don't think you had it yet. I guess so. I know that I think about it. Well, I see when you were last on. That's why I was joking we'll because you might have like fucked up. You know. I'll go to the theme while I figure that out. This is the Experience well, Podcast with me and someone else. <laughs> and Nathaniel. Yeah, just one person. Um, bringing it back. We haven't done a Just the Two of Us episode in a while. That's all we really need, you know? Just That's shoot all we need. with the boys. <laughs> it's, it's just the boys this week. <laughs> oh, speaking of, um, you had told me to watch it when we were in, like, school still. So that was a while ago, but I have now seen both seasons of The Boys. Of The Boys? <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is the episode where the boys talk about the boys, then. I'll be honest, like, I think the premise was kind of cool, and I was, like, pretty initially drawn in, but it it got far less engaging by the second season. Like, people were just doing shit, and then they were, like, making analogies to, like, too, 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 too much allegory stuff going on. Too much allegory stuff. Yeah. So you were big, bigger on like the first season when it was about like the problems of corporate America, as opposed to the second season where they just literally went Nazis. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I like I. I'll be honest. I still don't totally understand uh, the mean lady's like motives. What's your name? Uh. Which one? I don't know. I don't know which one. Which mean lady you're talking about? Oh, talking uh, about? Stormfront. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't know if you were talking about um, what's her name, the other mean lady. I don't know who the other mean lady is. Elizabeth Shue's character. What's her name? Oh. Uh, Madeline Stilwell. Oh no! Wasn't she already dead by season two? Well, but uh, you've seen both seasons, though. So we're ta- we're talking about both seasons, I guess. Oh yeah. Uh no no I meant Stormfront. I was just like. Okay yeah. She I, yeah, wanted. I guess... What was that analogy that like, like everyone was gonna be a soup and then they were gonna kill everybody who wasn't? Is that how that analogy works? I I don't understand. I don't think so. Then I don't... why did she want? Compound V to be out there and everyone to be a soup. Um, I and how the fuck so. is that an allegory for Nazism? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> like I was just I like, think okay. like a, I think it's like a pure race kind of thing. I think that's like the tie-in. Okay. But also, and this is like a bad excuse because I and shows do this all the time, but I think they're going to explain more in the next season. Based on like what happens at the end of the last episode. Yeah, but Homelander got sucked into it, so I I feel like it must have made sense to him. I well, I think lost. well, I I've heard about this before. I think like with Homelander, he'll get sucked into anything that's about him, and like she just made him feel really good about himself. Like he kind of needs that. Um, like he's yeah. constantly looking for uh, what's it called? Like self Affection. something. Yeah, I guess. Well, like like. Something to prop him up. Because, like, again, I brought up Madeline Stilwell, but it was, like, the same thing with her. He's got, like, a mother oh, issue yeah, or something. Yeah. Well, because he didn't have one. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's some through line there. I, I can get why he would get talked into it, basically. But... Do you want me to say spoilers, and then you cut it and put it at the front? <laughs> <laughs> spoilers. We didn't really talk about anything that. Hmm. Anyway, right. yeah, it was it was all right. Just all right. It turned I from like it's... it turned from like no, actually, uh, never mind. I was going to I was going to try to bucket it in like a type of show, but I don't even really know what it was. Like I can't tell if it was like good or not. I kind of think it wasn't, but the production value was like really solid. So It does look really good. That, that that was nice. Like it made it very 
watchable and at many times certainly enjoyable. But now that I'm getting like a bigger picture of everything, I'm just like, I don't really get it, which is not satisfying. If you don't like the violence, too, I can see that being off-putting. Yeah, or there's pretty, like, gratuitous sex scenes as well. There are there are very gratuitous sex scenes. Yeah. So, very uh, gratuitous show in general. Yeah, that's, that's true. So, oh, now I'm watching Manifest. <laughs> oh, you get sucked into that? Well, see, it's funny because it's kind of the opposite. I really like where it's going, and I think it's going to do some cool shit. I mean, I'm not that far in, so I guess I can't really judge yet. But I have to say, the production value is, like, right below where I'm comfortable, and the acting is bad. I I watched the first episode, so, you know, I can't judge the whole the whole series. But, like, yeah, some of the things you just mentioned, like, the acting, not good. I hated, like, the, the in the first episode, at least. I don't know. I can't speak for the rest, but, like, the narration at the beginning. If you remember mm. it, because I don't no, know if they I do it for every episode. But I just watched like, it, so <laughs> that's, um, that's bad. There you go. But yeah, the first episode, there's a lot of like heavy narration that where the main girl, whatever her name is, is like, we were oh, in the air. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, she's like, we were in the oh. airport. And at that point, we didn't even realize our lives were going to change forever. I was like, oh, gosh, so bad. <laughs> yeah, but not at an unwatchable level, like the 100. I literally can't watch that. The acting is so shit. Um, and the production the value is like so low. Very different show, but uh, the I just was giving that an example of something where like those two things combined were so bad. I literally could. I, I thought think... the hundred was better. Got, got better as it went on. And like the oh, writing gets, that. and the writing gets better too. Oh. But it does have a lot of like bad lines. I mean, it's a CW show, so. Yeah, yeah. For a CW show, it's pretty good, considering. No, no. The only thing I'll say that about is Riverdale. And I only watched the first season, and I have no interest in watching more of it. But, like, yeah, production value and acting levels for a CW show, I mean, Riverdale has to take the cake. It's, like, not even fucking close. Oh, yeah. And and that show knows it's bad, though, I think. is that, That's why I can watch it. Because I'm like, I know it's bad. They know it's bad. We all know we this know is not bad. know it's bad. Yeah. We, we're all it's aware. It's a military SpongeBob. Is that? <laughs> Nothing. Like 10 uh, people will get Well, oh, shit. Actually, probably less. A couple people will get that. No, I'd say about half. So that'll land. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, it, it, it's, it's, I, I'm fine because I know it's just junk. But, but yeah, Manifest, I, I couldn't. I don't see why everyone is going crazy for it. Especially since it got canceled. So that was another, like, uh, thing to dissuade me from continuing to watch it, because... Nah, that's a really bad argument, and let me give well, you... Well, it's only a ca- Let me give you a counterexample. Go ahead. The OA. Amazing fucking show. I nice. watched the first season, and then forgot that the second season oh. came out, and <laughs> never Dude, went no. back. Here's the, but now here's it's been thing. too long. It's been no, too no. long. Rewatch the first season, then hope, hopefully you'll appreciate it more than you'll like be. Because here's the thing. The first season on its own, at the end of it, and I don't know how much you recall, it yeah, leaves I... you with this feeling. Time out, time out. All of that, all of the first season, accumulated to that, that was the fucking point? Like, that is so unsatisfying. That's, that's how I felt after season. I did not care for the show at all when only the first season was out. And then in season two, you find out the answer to that question is no. <laughs> All of that in season one was not just for the end of season one. There's it, it 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 builds in a way that is like unimaginable, like totally like the scope is just nothing you could fathom after watching the first season. Um, but then if you rewatch the first season after you've seen season two, you see that all the little hints were there all along. And you're like, holy fuck, this is like so well done and thought out. And it's just a great show. So I would really it's suggest it. Definitely something that I remember every like several months. And I say, ah, oh, I should go back. And then I just forget the next. Do, do not just jump into season two if you're not fresh on season one. Because you're going to be like, wait, what? 
I'm trying to, and, and this won't be spoilers because I don't remember much. So I'll try to tell you what I think I remember about the show, okay? Because okay. it could be a different. Show. I watch I watch a lot of TV, so sure, it all sure. kind of any any of these shows kind of get mingled, especially like these weird sci-fi stuff. So this is a sci-fi thing. It's like, is this the one where she's like in a like the main girl is in like okay? So there's a group of people. Okay. That are doing stuff. This is really bad, but again, yes. there's no way there could be spoilers. Uh, and then like there's that woman who's in like that glass cage almost. Is this right? Okay. Is that right? I mean, like in some guy's you're basement. You're not wrong. Yes. Like in the yes, guy's. Yes. Okay, so this correct. is the show. And then like the last episode ends like they're in like a school. Correct. Kind of like a cafeteria. There's like that scene. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Don't say that because that's that's a spoiler. Is that a spoiler? I see. I don't even know. No, no, no. I mean, like, if you said more, like. Oh, okay. No, I don't know anymore. I don't remember. Anymore. What? How? What? All right. You just need it's to rewatch been, it. Daniel, the year is 2021. This series came out in 2016. Okay. I I can't remember what I ate for lunch yesterday, so there's no way I would remember. Yeah. Well, I remember. I, I mean, could, as I could much summarize as I, every episode for you. So. As much as I've already said is pretty good considering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the but woman you in forgot the how it starts, even, and why it's intriguing off the bat. Uh, is it like a missing child thing? Yeah, and she was blind, and she comes back. Oh, and she's that's not right. blind anymore. Oh, that's right. She comes back from the thing, and then we don't know yeah. what the thing is. That that's, that's like the first twenty minutes of the first episode. So no big deal there. But, and and that's not even what the show's about, even a little bit, like. Oh, it's what the first season's about. No. Dude, it's not what the first season's about. Well, I mean, plot-wise, sure. Oh, I mean, like, that causes things. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. But it's not actually about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Hard Knocks starts tonight. Are you watching? Speaking of TV. No? Tell me what. Cowboys. Huh? Cowboys. Yeah, tell tell me what uh, was your question? Who is it, who is it on? No, are you gonna watch it? Oh, yeah, maybe. Uh. Oh, convincing. Yeah, I don't like <laughs> I don't like that with Hard Knocks. They delete the episode, like they don't stay on HBO. Whatever, you know, Max, whatever. You know what I mean? I guess so. They disappear after like a month. All right, well, fucking watch it live. Well, I know. Wait, it it doesn't matter after a month anyway, because you know what's on in a month. Well, no, but last. Okay, I remember last year. (laughs) Who fucking cares about Hard Knocks once the season starts? I don't know, but like, you can't even watch old seasons, is what I mean. You can't go back and watch like 2014's Hard Knocks. Dude, you gotta understand. It's not what it's about. Okay, it's not like a. I know. I know. Yeah. But it it just frustrates me. I think this happens. It's like the news, dude. Are you upset that you can't go back and watch a news episode? You know what? Me? Maybe I want to go watch the news from October 2014. <laughs> yeah, okay. What was happening? No, but I don't know. I think but I think this happened two years ago when I like, you know, I was like a few weeks late and I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll just catch up, you know, whatever. And the first season, the first episode wasn't available. But I was like, well, I guess I, I guess I can't go back and watch the first one. Just oh, saying. God. Uh, so anyway, I won't watch it live because I only have like HBO Max, so I don't think I can watch HBO a lot. HBO is pretty confusing with that, so I'll watch it tomorrow. You know. All right. Or, or you know, tomorrow morning, whatever. Yeah. Cowboys, am I right? Dude, Hard Knocks is so fucking good. Like, I don't know. I'm like not interested in the Cowboys though. Me neither. But here's the thing. Well, okay, I'll say this. I found out in the middle of the week, like last off season, that like Derwin James was gonna be out for the year. And then I started watching Hard Knocks and I forgot. And they did that and I fucking almost cried. It made me almost cry over news that I already knew. <laughs> see? Okay, but dude. see, you already knew it and you went back and watched. They have no, I didn't go back. I <laughs> okay, I, but... I forgot no. okay, it had been like four days and I just like like, it wasn't the first thing on my mind, because I'm not a Chargers fan. I just like really good secondary players. So. Yeah, I don't know. And maybe I'll watch it. Okay. The Cowboys have fucking anybody interesting? 
see D. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I don't want to go see like. No, actually, Deshaun I want to see Wright. what's up with Dak. What's up with Dak? He's not practicing. He's hurt. Yeah, but like you know, they're still going to talk about him. Oh. Yeah, but they're not going to tell you anything. You never know. Some might slip when the cameras are on 24/7. Who knows? Reality TV. Am no, I right? but they they edit it. <laughs> <laughs> they sent it to the Cowboys. The Cowboys approve of whatever they sent out. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, another thing. Oh, my gosh. Wait. This. I don't even know where to start. Okay. I'll start here since we're talking about football already. And then you can remind me to say the other thing I want to say. Uh, I found out I have fifth spot in my snake draft this year. So who's it going to be? Five kind of sucks. That's That's never a good spot. I think, like, historically, you want – the tail ends. Is that right? No. Like the middle. Oh, I gotta see. Wait, stop. That's fucking lame. We're not talking about that. Who do I fucking take at five? That's the tough okay. question. Yeah, look, let me pull up. I gotta pull DMC, up. DMC. Dalvin. Derrick Henry. Uh, Kamara. Those are gonna be the first four. Yeah. Who's fucking left for you, boy? Five. I'm, just, I'm trying to pull up ADPs, and this is not loading. So. What What are you using? Roll with me. Just my internet is not working. <laughs> How are you still on this call? Uh, my internet is selective. It might cancel. It might get me out of the call. Like if I open oh. Zoom, my my computer is really bad with Zoom. I'll tell you that. Okay. Like when Zoom's running, no, nothing else in my on my internet can is allowed to. <laughs> To run. All right. So what? What do you say? Okay, Zeke. I'm gonna close out of this. No, not Zeke. What the fuck? No, I mean we're talking. I was just referencing the players. So, DMC. Who'd you say already? DMC. Okay. Cook. Man, you are out of the loop. DMC, co- Cook, Henry, and Kamara are top four locked. Yeah, and I wouldn't take Kamara fourth, even or fifth, even if he was available. That's insane. I, 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 I'm worried about uh, the efficiency no. there. But He's so fucking good. Insane. It doesn't that matter. It does matter. He was really bad without Breeze. I don't think that's true. It's exactly true. I'll, I'll, I'll look that up while you, you talk about your, who you're thinking about. No, I asked you a question. I'll look it up while you fucking Okay, you look up question. his stats with, with and without Breeze. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, looks like here your options are Nick Chubb. That could be really good. No. Yeah. Not a state Chubb at five is insane. In my... Well, I'm just looking at the options here. I'm oh, just it's reading PPR. Through. It's PPR. PPR. Well, Chubb is like, well, because, okay, the thing about Nick Chubb is he's boring, right? Like, Nothing exciting. He's not going to win you your league, but like in like or, or the week probably, but he's consistent. That's kind of what you want in a first round pick. Uh, Saquon Barkley, I'm a little worried there. Ezekiel Elliott is like a dumbed down version of Nick Chubb. Wow, imagine saying that a year ago. <laughs> not That's fucking true. serious. That's- Uh, Is my clicking very loud? I mean, it's loud, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, I got a it, better it, microphone, it's so not, it's like picking shit up. It's not a frequent click. Um, Jonathan Taylor, yeah. Not a lot of good options here. And I think you want a running back, right? Well, see, that's the question. Like, okay. Uh, so I have to play in for a running back in case one of the top four falls. Because then I'm scooping them up, no problem. I think... Uh, I think Devontae Adams is an interesting pick at five. You know, I don't feel – okay. Just to, And then also, call me fucking crazy, but I've been, I've been doing some prep for taking Kelsey at five. Doing some prep? Mm-hmm. What does doing because, some prep mean? Like mock well, drafts? Well, yeah, well, and just like kind of just mapping stuff out, figuring out like, okay, because here's – Okay, if you don't take a running back in the first round and you're in the first half, right, you have to ask yourself, who the fuck are going to be my two running backs? Yeah, because then you're looking at, like, Najee Harris or Austin Eckler as your first running back. And see, I think Harris in all these ADP charts is way, way overdone. Like, he's way too high 
insane. But that's how people are going to be drafting. No, no, but, well, okay, fair. Um, but nonetheless, like, I don't know, dude. There's just so many situations, like, in rounds two through five, mapping it out, and I'm like, I could reasonably see, like, this wide receiver dropping to me or this way. So <clears throat> that just makes me want to not pick Adams first because I feel like I can get wide receiver value later in the draft and I want to try to be able to capture that. And it doesn't matter if it's like my third bench spot, you know what I mean? But um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you could probably get like Keenan Allen in round four or something. I... Uh... Maybe. No. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. There's a, yeah, you're right. There's there's plenty of depth for receiver. And like historically, the RB ones that are drafted perform better than RB twos that are drafted. And I don't just yeah. mean like obviously, obviously they put up more points because they're drafted higher. But like even within, like finishing the year as RB ones are more. <laughs> running back ones are more consist more consistently finish as top twenty running backs than running back twos is what's trying. Yeah. Like it, it, it's a, it's a much sketchier area. And if you look at the options, I mean the people we already just mentioned: Najee Harris, Austin Eckler, Antonio Gibson. You know, Mixon. All right. I, you know I'm gonna fall for Mixon again, and I don't fucking care. Yeah, fall. Yeah, fall if if he's Mixon. there in the third, I'm probably gonna take him. Uh, I mean, last year he was just hurt. He wasn't bad. Everything about him and his situation is good, except for one thing. That is? Uh, offensive line? Well. Not great. I was going to say Zach Taylor. Oh, yeah. Well, I think it's both. I think it's Zach Taylor and the offensive line. Yeah, maybe. So it's two things wrong. <laughs> But there's no competition, I think, is what you're getting at. Yeah, that's part of it. And also, I just think he's, like, fucking good at football. So. Hey, Bill Belichick called him the best running back in the league. All right. Um, so, Camara without Breeze, Ford. Oh, wait. Sorry. I, 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 I didn't check to see if this is. I, I saw somewhere where it had his fantasy stats, but I, I can't find those right now. No, I found... Well, I just don't know if it's doing, like, fucking uh, PPR or not. Anyway. Uh, either way. 10.5, yeah. 5, 5.2, 15.7, 15.4. Uh, and that, I'm not going to act like that's great, but also it's a four-week span. That was just um, last year, right? Yeah. Well, you could also include 2019, I would think. Uh, okay. Well, anyway. Well, that gives, that gonna... gives you, because that'll give you like eight games. That's like half a season. Still not great, but yeah. But either way, sure. It's not great, but it's a small sample, but still not great. That would probably be like our and, and I think also a huge thing going there is when – you're talking about like having Breeze and then he gets injured and you have to like shake things up because of it. That's a lot different than um, if you like are going into the season knowing that Jameis is your quarterback, right? Uh, okay. Is Jameis the, I don't know. I, I don't know if Jameis is the quarterback. I, he is. He I is. think they're going to shake things up. Yes. No, I think they're just going to, Neither Taysom Hill or Jameis Winston are going to get, like, 15 starts. Without injury? Yeah, yeah. If they both disagree. are injured. I think it's it's just going to be, like, a mix it's and match. Maybe not like, not, like, an every other week thing, but, like, it'd be, like, Taysom Hill for three starts, and then it'll be Jameis for four, you know, like, we'll go back. Okay. Why do you think... Uh, Kamara missed some games when Breeze did as well, so it's only four games again, but those were 28.1... Uh, 8.9, 10.9, 6.6. So, yeah. And the 28.1 was against Seattle in, in but, 2019. 
Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, obviously there are situational differences because they have to change things, but still that's eight games of uh, not elite play. And I don't even think it's that close. That's like a 14 points per game average, right? Again, oh. like he doesn't have the chance to have like the six TD game. Like, yeah, he's he's also like the most efficient player in like history in scoring touchdowns, which I don't know that might keep happening, but historically probably won't. If it's a pattern. All right. Well, okay. Look, to answer your question that I didn't let you spit out, um, uh, Jameis is fucking electric. And if you don't want him to start all 16, 17 games, then you don't fucking like football. So I, I agree it would be fun to watch, but I, oh, Taysom Hill would also be fun to watch. He's electric no. in a different way. No. In a different way. He's fucking lame. I'm not interested in watching that shit. He's getting paid like twice as much as James this year. I don't care. Why does that, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? I don't he know. is maybe, not fun maybe, to watch. Maybe old Mickey's going down to practice and being like, hey. <laughs> Gotta start this guy. And Sean's like, oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Mickey. No, I, Mickey Loomis. Oh. Old Mickey. Oh, we're on a first name basis. So yeah, we're, right. Yeah. All right. Well, so if those four go and I take a running back at five, let's assume, who am I fucking taking? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, I mean, Nick Chubb would be team safe. No. Dude, Chubb at five, if, that's just so bad. Oh, Chubb. Because I think with five, sorry, yeah, yeah. At pick five, I like the log value starting to dwindle, but, I mean, uh, you should still be trying to hit a home run, right? Uh, No, you need safe players in round one. You don't need a home run. No. I would say it's the opposite. No. Okay. Dude, that's crazy. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, I mean, it, it's the cliche, you're not gonna win your league in round one, but you can lose it. Yeah, and you know what? That's fucking wrong. Okay? You know who my first two picks were last year? Saquon and Mixon. And you lost your league because of round one. What the fuck are you talking about? How did I lose my league when I won it? <laughs> okay. Fine. Anecdotal. Anyway, take Zeke Elliott then. But, uh, and that's why I was getting it. Hard Knocks is going to be really valuable for him. Oh, uh, you just want to watch Ezekiel Elliott. No, no, I got to get the scoop on the guy to take him. Because he was fucking, okay. I think Zeke last year is what you're afraid of Kamara maybe being, which is on that line where it's like, well, I have to fucking play him. But he's kind of ruining your week every week. I don't think I don't think El Camaro's gonna ruin your week every week, but if if he scores those numbers that if he if you take the eight games in the past two seasons without yeah, Breeze and stack them back to back and make a season out of it, that's gonna fuck up your league or your season. Because yeah, you can't, you can't drop like, him. Yeah, you can't like drop David him. Johnson, you can't like sit three him. Years ago. You have to fucking like, play him. Like David Johnson, like three years ago or something. Four years ago. You know, I think of David Johnson or someone else. You know, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. When he kind of ha- like after his just insane year, he was scoring like twelve points a game, and I was like, I, I guess Two I'm years starting after him. His insane year. Yeah, whatever it was. Uh, and yeah, if you're going for home run, then it would probably be like Austin Eckler. And see, I am leaning towards that. I'm not gonna lie. I I, I think if you were like right now at this fucking moment, you have to decide. Like the draft is right now. I think I would probably pick Eckler. I mean, Joe Lombardi doesn't he everywhere he goes, um, mm-hmm. like, leads the league in running back receptions. Mm-hmm. I mean, am I, my guy's fucking sick. Uh, that Plus, ooh, I got the intel from Hard Knocks last year with him, and he's fucking awesome. So there's that. I have some intel for you right here. Uh-huh. From Austin Eckler himself. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get, here's a quote from him. If you want to get fantasy points, you better have me on your team. 
So that's all I got to say. If I'm healthy, I'm going to score you points. Yeah, doesn't he fucking like Twitch stream too? And he's like and super cool. vocal about stuff? I don't know about that. I just, I got his no, quote no, right he does. there. Yeah, that was from yeah. the Chargers website. <laughs> all right, I'm sold. I fucking love this guy. Yeah, Austin Eckler? Yeah. What about like an Aaron Jones? Yeah, but another, see. Another I big touchdown the, guy. Well, but when he, when it comes, it comes in bunches. Aaron Jones? Yeah. Like, yeah, he always like, he has like 40 point games, right? Yeah. But I'll also have like four point games for no fucking reason. And I assume so, you're on Yeah, go ahead. Wait, what? No, no. I was moving on to the next one. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just saying like that's an example of where like we might have been mis- miscommunicating earlier about like safe picks or whatever, right? Like I like Aaron Jones is obviously not a safe pick, but he's also not a home run potential pick because you know that you are getting the bad games with him. Like it has to happen. Like Aaron Rodgers is a fucking quarterback. There'll be games where they use the running backs extensively and they get a lot of touches and things go really well. But there are also going to be games where he's just going to fucking force feed Devontae Adams and it's going to fucking work because he's awesome. And then MVS or whatever gets like a fucking 50 yard touchdown and Tanyan ends up with stuff. And then, then you look at the stat sheet and you go, oh Randall Cobb. Yeah. You look at the stat sheet and you go, Aaron Jones ran the ball eight times for 32 yards and got one reception. And like, Jordy Nelson had happen? 10 targets. I mean, he's. <laughs> From the ground. Uh, uh, there's no way to trade picks, right? I should have asked. I can trade picks. Oh, so why don't you trade back? Because, I mean, someone's got to take it. I, 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 I understand the. <laughs> The definition of a trade. <laughs> I mean, I, I I I might poke around, but I'm we, we just found out our draft order the other day, so. Yeah, see if you can poke around because you can get Austin Eckler at the end of the round. You don't have to get him there. Maybe. I mean. That would be better. Really... And then you'd pick up ground in another round, huh? But see, that's the thing. Who can't you say that about? I think I think I could get everybody at the end of the round. Well, then that's the why you would trade back. But no, but see, here's the thing. I think I could get everybody at the end of the round, but who's actually going to be left at the end of the round? But you, okay, I don't think anyone's getting Austin Eckler at five. I don't think anyone's trading up to get Austin Eckler. Well, okay, but where would you say I trade back to? Nine? Sure, yeah. Okay, any, so I would say any any farther back. Dang I think Eckler your... could easily go five, but, six, seven, or eight. You'd have to be comfortable with several players is, is you know, obviously the point. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good question. Am I like do it's, I just want to take who's left, or should I try to like leverage was, the fact that I get to choose? Kind of like what I was hoping, like the Dolphins were gonna do in the draft this year with the quarterback, just like trade back and just get whatever quarterbacks left. Actually, okay. Oh yeah, but, but I think that's different because you got to get your guy with like real football. Um, <clears throat> let me know if this makes sense. Uh, and part of the reason why I haven't really considered trading it. So like the last two years I've traded picks and I was like the only one to trade picks. I actually traded with two people last year. Uh, and there were no other pick trades. Um, and I've won the league three out of the last four years. And I just feel like I should stop like tinkering and doing like fuck shit and just like fucking play to potentially make it more enjoyable for everybody. You know what I mean? I don't think that's tinkering. And someone's got to agree on the other mm-hmm. end. And yeah, it's I part mean, of the game. I think it makes it more fun when you have more. I think tinkering makes it more fun. Yeah. That's like I saying, think... that's like saying we should take out roster moves. You know. Well, it's just like, but everybody does like roster moves, right? It's just like, if you look back at the past four seasons, it's just like, fuck, that dude's always just doing the most. And like, it's worked, and I appreciate that, but I don't know. Dude, I'm just getting nervous about people. You're tanking. Like, you, you, you want to tank. <laughs> well, I'm getting nervous about people like, okay, here's, here's, a, here's a good example. <clears throat> My friends and I, uh, we would play, we would have like poker nights, usually like once a month. And it was awesome for me because that's how I paid my utilities like every month. And before we started all this, I let them know, like, 
hey, I know what I'm doing. Like I almost dropped out of school to play poker. Um, and they were like, no, it's fine. Like, you know, it'll be good. We'll have fun and we'll use real money. And I said, okay. And then, yeah, I, and, and eventually we stopped playing. And I was happy about that because I was afraid things were going to escalate because people were going to get tired of me like taking their fucking money. Right. It, it was, it was always like I would get some money. One other person would make some money and then everybody else would get cleaned out and the other person would rotate. So like everyone kind of had their day, but just having that constant there, it just, it doesn't, it's not fun for everyone after a while, you know? This is a weird flex for your complaining about all the winning you've done in life. Um, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think, yeah, you're right. I kind of, I'm sure I sound like a fucking douche a little bit, but I don't know. Isn't like inclusivity and all this stuff really important? Like, dude, I would go so far as to say that a lot of times people sandbag from the start because they're prioritizing what I'm describing before they even get into it and it might look at like a problem do you know what i mean no okay so you and me are both really competitive people right okay other people are not as competitive why are they not as competitive because other things are more important to them and one of those things might be you know is anybody going to be upset is everyone comfortable is everyone having a good time is there anything potentially frustrating occurring and those are more important to them than just like, I will do anything to win. Uh, Do you have a sense that people are getting frustrated in your league? (sighs) Yeah, I don't know. If I, I mean, I don't know. Just go into your group chat and say, hey guys, am I just too good? I'm sure they'd love that. (laughs) (laughs) I will say, uh, to make it about me, of course. Yeah. As you know, I'm very good at fantasy baseball this yeah. year. Not, not, I like, I've, been, I've had the best team. I haven't won every year and that's part of the randomness. And we, I've talked, I think I've talked about it on, on the podcast too, but I've made the championship and I've had, I've scored the most points like the last four years in a row. Every year that I've been in the league. This year, kind of tanking, not intentionally, but like not doing so well. I'm, I don't know if they like that or not. I think no one cares. Okay. That, that's a good counterpoint. I mean, maybe they, maybe they're excited because they think they can win now, but yeah, my team is basically like average this year. It's not bad, but like, I, I've, I've actually recently I've been bad. I've lost four straight. And, uh. That's not good. Yeah, it's not good. I, well, it's not like a trying. Like, I don't know what to do. I, I've had players really. And that could do when, when I have a pitcher that gives up 10 runs in three innings. Like, that's the week right there. That's negative oh. points. That's a lot of negative points in my league. If I've ever heard of it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think they care, but they, and I think they still try to win every year. And, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think you're fine. All right. Well, yeah, I'll start, I'll, I'll start tinkering then. As long as they like you as a person, which I can't confirm. I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of a dick. Yeah, so it's uh, it's hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as long, as long as you're not doing anything like illegal or anything, like there's nothing wrong with playing within the rules. And again, for the record, the league that I'm in, they've changed the rules to stop my tinkering. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so, dude, wait, I was fucking right the whole time. Uh, it was way to person. leave that well, out. Well, I will say it was one. It was the league manager uh-huh. who didn't uh-huh. love yeah, my yeah. tinkering, but everyone else was okay with it. So maybe there is one person in your league that's like they were okay with it trades. to you, or in general, or, and then they general. let your commission know without telling you. No, no, they were fine. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, the but and and, <laughs> and well, well, here's the other thing, the yeah. the the tinkering that I've done has caught on among the other people too. Mm. Like the more that I had done it, the more other people have done it, and still do it to this day. Like, and I guess that hasn't happened in your league yet, but 
maybe maybe more people will start trading picks in your league. Yeah, I don't know why they don't do that. But it's not it's also not just that. It's not like it gives me some crazy advantage. Like again, last year I traded into the first so that like have two picks in the first so that I could take Saquon and Mixon, who combined played like five weeks. Yeah, so maybe they're okay with uh well, but you still won. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not it's just about okay it's more on principle. It's not the actual things that I'm doing. It's more on principle. It's just like how am I always fucking like cheesing my way into spots on like figuring it out, you know? But is it cheesing? Like was the trade unfair that you made last year? No, 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 it's not that, but it, it maybe not cheesing, but I really am just doing the most out here. Like, okay, oh fuck. I wish I had the quote. I should have taken a screenshot. But my like, friend in the group me was like, if you like fucking win again, that's gonna be really annoying because you try the most and that means like trying would like helps and that means that if i'm not doing well that means i just suck <laughs> it was like the essence of the thing it was like this is like a test case that it's not just fucking random because dude i see that on reddit all the fucking time people are like oh if you lose like it's okay it's just a crap shoot anyway and it's like yeah well if you come in like bottom two in your league every year like you just fucking suck at this like get over okay it. yeah you but, don't have to – oh, it's random. If you have one bad year – I'm not going to act like I had one bad year, okay? I want, like, what do you think happens the year before last? I didn't make the playoffs. It was it was not a good time. I drafted fucking Gurley and David Johnson with my first two picks. Not how you want to – not how the season should go, you know? Yeah. We talked about this, but, like, like I said, I've only won once out of the last few years. But it's different than your case since you've won every year, almost. And I would say that's randomness, but um, there is some randomness. But yeah, there there's randomness up to a point. I, I'm surprised you've won that many times. That's actually well, dude. You, I mean, my magic is just in the playoffs because okay. that's where it matters, right? You just win in are, the playoffs. Are you a division you... winner every year, or we however it's structured? Okay, how's it structured? Oh, oh, good. Okay. 2017 and 2018, I had a bye. Last year, I did not have a bye. So all time, I'm seven and zero in the playoffs, which is why my group me group me name is seven and zero playoff king. <laughs> okay, Does that yeah, answer your that's questions? Great. That's a lot of playoff. That, yeah, that's insane. <laughs> but like, dude, I just go ham on the research, um, and that is what does it. Like, okay, okay. Oh, I love this. For my first, um, sorry, I'm, now I'm just thinking back to so much stuff. Okay, uh, first championship year, right? I'm in the finals. Uh, guess who my opponent has? Todd Gurley, and that was the 2017 year. That was like the Todd Gurley year. You know who drafted Todd Gurley that year? I'm guessing it was you. It was me, and we traded. Because after, like, four or five weeks, I was like, no way Gurley keeps this up. I'm just going to, like, suck everything I can for him. And then that dude ends up, like, making it to the finals with me. And Gurley fucking puts up 50 that week, okay? All right. I had one – okay, I made some, like, good calls uh, on who to start, including C.J. Anderson uh, when he had, like, 28 points. But my big decision that week was – do I start Blake Bortles or Tom Brady? <laughs> and I fucking started Blake Bortles. And the difference between Blake Bortles and Tom Brady, like, points that week, was larger than the difference than I won by. So if I had started Brady, I would have lost. Yeah, Blake Bortles is pretty good, though. I mean... <laughs> He was he was having a he was having a pretty good year. No no wait no he wasn't. Maybe he was. I can't scroll down on his stats. But yeah, crazy man. So anyway, yeah, I just make really good decisions in the playoffs. That's all you got to do. Just be good in the playoffs. I mean seriously, like everything is everything throughout the whole season is just to get to the playoffs, right? That should be your mentality. 
Like, yeah. it, it doesn't matter if you make it if you lose in the first round. And it also doesn't matter if you score the most points every week in the playoffs if you don't make it. So, yeah, you have to balance those things. Uh, there was the thing you wanted to talk about before we got to this. Yeah, we decided our draft order using uh, the men's Olympic climbing results, and it was fucking hype. Did you have you seen speed climbing? Dude, I woke up at 4 a.m. every day last week, or Tuesday through Friday, to watch the climbing live. Isn't that insane? Oh, I already knew about speed climbing, dude. Okay. Like the the hilarious thing is, those. People, I mean, like, obviously they're fucking amazing, but they're not even, like, that good at speed climbing. Like Olympic speed climbers. Yeah, I mean, there were a few speed specialists, but for, like, a lot of those people were, like, boulders or lead climbers who were just, like, there to compete, and so they, like, did speed climbing. Like, Andra is a good example, right? And, I mean, don't get me wrong, making it up that wall in, like, under eight seconds is a fucking feat. But when you compare it to the world record, which is, like, sub six, mm-hmm. it's just not even, like, you know, that's that's fucking, like, over 25%. Oh, wait, that's going the wrong way. That's, like, over 33% more time. That's insane. Can you imagine if, like, the, uh, okay, let's just say uh, Bolt's 100 meter was, like, what? Sub 10, just barely sub 10, right? Okay. Imagine if there were people competing in the 100 meter who were running like 13.3s. But that is a thing. Really? It does happen, doesn't it? Maybe not. No. They might run like mid 11s at worst. Okay, yeah. And especially in the finals, dude, that's the thing. Because it was a combined thing, the not good at speed climbing people could make it through to the finals. And then it's just like they're in the finals. I mean, sure, but there's bad people. I shouldn't say this. There's not as skilled as the best people in the Olympics, every Olympics, in a lot of different things. Did I say that best way? Like no, no. But at, what about compared to non-Olympians? Like that's yeah, look thing, at like, look at baseball. So right, for well, baseball, uh, okay. America sends like not Real even sports minor league. Don't count. Oh okay. <laughs> Which sports count then? Fucking Olympic sports, dude. I, well, that's an Olympic sport. Baseball is not really an Olympic sport. It technically qualifies as an Olympic sport. No, I know it's a sport that's in the Olympics, but you're not hearing me, okay? You can be right or you can, like, understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I could be It's both. up to you. <laughs> I, think, I think it's both. I understand what you're saying. I'm just kind of playing with it. But I, I'm trying to think of another. Yeah, like, all the gymnastics are pretty much the best. Swimming. Stuff. Anyway, yeah, it was – so So the scoring was multiplicative, right? So it's like if you got, like, second, fourth, and fourth again in the three spots, you would do two times four times four, and you would have 32 points, and then you want to have the least number of points at the end. But what that means is, you know – the difference between first and second is the same as the difference between fourth and eighth. So getting first is like huge. And then there's like a steep drop off, right? So the three people who medaled all got first in one of the three competitions or sec- sections. And then the medal order was basically who did least shitty in the other two that they didn't get first in. Yeah. So what did Which is say? wild. Uh, with with one person to go in the lead climbing, the guy who was in first before that climb dropped all the way to sixth. So he went from gold to wow. not meddling with one person left to go. So would you prefer a different scoring system? 
Oh, I'm not even critiquing it. It was just fucking buck wild how it worked. Uh, it's it's also not fruitful to talk about fixes to the scoring system because the problem you could say is that climbing was only granted one medal this time around, but next Olympics there will be two. So there will be a speed medal and then a bouldering lead combined medal, and that makes a lot more sense on paper. So we'll have like speed specialists like all competing next olympics and not like boulder lead climbers trying to do their best on speed uh yeah that makes sense so and, okay. and then the scoring system will just be like whatever it, it'll be it'll be a lot easier to accidentally have a good scoring system uh anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up uh yeah i am gonna be a high school teacher um starting next week and i am probably going to law school at some point soon a lot of big career changes coming up yeah <laughs> so um that's been wild it's it's been a fucking crazy like month it you you hit you hit me at like just the right time because i was not gonna be able to do this like um yeah before so you are leaving the gasu yeah high school teacher what are you going to be teaching unfortunately not calculus but physical education no no i'll, I'll be teaching math that'd be crazy if you were just like a health teacher why would that be crazy i'm I super know. fucking healthy i well <laughs> i don't mean that i just mean I minus the drugs <laughs> I th well, it's just so out of left field for you, I guess I was trying to... Uh, math, Is it, though? Just, I don't know. I was just trying to think of a thing that you wouldn't teach. Oh, oh, could... for P... Oh, yeah. No, that would be science. That'd be insane. Like, I... Really? I, could... I feel like you could fake your way through, like, biology. Dude, I don't know fucking shit about any of that shit. It makes no sense. I think, like, physics would... Mm, no. Wait, I maybe could... Maybe, like, I... in a... I could get by with physics for sure. Yeah, cause... physics you could do. I was going to say, maybe like environmental science. That would be like... Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah no. But yeah. <laughs> like an earth science thing. Yeah, okay. Basically, uh, I realized you... I wanted to be an SI leader still, and by being a or a plus leader, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, and uh, being a program coordinator is not doing that. So I was like, let's it, it work with not. kids again and shit. You like the kit. You like being on the ground level. Actually, shaping, though, like shaping that's the minds. what I am, dude. I'm a grunt worker. Sh sh shaping the minds of the next. That's why I think law school or law school and then going a career in law could be good for me because I can be a grunt worker on the ground, like doing stuff, and still make like two hundred thousand dollars a year. So. So what is the law? Uh, yeah. What, what do you mean? What, yeah. What's the law career going to be? Oh, I don't know. Still a high school teacher. No. Oh. So are Am you I, you doing? What's up? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was good. No, I was asking like, are you curious about like what field of law I would pursue? I, I don't, yeah, I don't know what I was asking. Um, are you going to be pursuing? You're going to do that same time as you're teaching? No, no, no. Um, I I I can't like it's too late to start law school like in this year. So um. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to apply for fall 22, see what happens if I get into a really good school or get a full ride at a good school, then that'll be enticing. If things don't go the way I was hoping because I have high expectations, then, you know, I can apply again next year. I might end up deferring, like who knows what's going to happen. So I'd say, like, that's part of the reason also why I changed jobs. If I was like locked into law school fall 22, then I would have just wrote out the position I had for however long. But, you know, since since it's not a guarantee that it's happening fall 22, I was like, what is my actual next step independent of this? And that would be going back and teaching. Yeah, this it's, if you don't get a full ride, it's going to be a lot of money. I mean, if I don't get a full ride, I'll get a partial no. ride. Like, so. dude, my, I can't, my application is like looking really good, really good. So, 
Yep. I'm excited. How long is law school? Is it three years? Three years. Three years. I got that. Yeah. Then you got to take some tests. Yep. All right. So, uh, but for now, it's take tests. It's <laughs> now it's now it's math. Is it a uh, like like a pre-calculus thing? It might be like algebra two even. Oh, you don't even know. Isn't school start? I soon? kind of know. Uh, school started um, eight days ago. School started eight days ago. <laughs> yep. So I'm, I'm just are, gonna. Are you teaching it? <laughs> my are first just day. Sitting in the room. In the third week. Yeah, I don't know. That's part of what I need to find out. Like, uh, why, why are you starting late? Did you just not apply later? Or what? I don't no, I I had to take this uh certification exam basically uh, in order to be allowed oh, to get the yeah. position. But I mean, the scary thing is. And this is, you know, just how things operate. Like, the if I didn't come along, like the position might still just be like vacant. And like, I don't, I don't totally have a good understanding of like what's going on there. But yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll find out. Yeah, excuse me for asking. Week. Excuse me for asking, but who is teaching them right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, what I are they know. doing? It might, it might be like a long-term sub deal. Okay. It's still yeah. weird. Like it, it, that's not a thing that happens, and you can understand that. I mean, it's not a thing that happens to at the schools we got to go to, right? But this is a thing that definitely happens. Teach a teacher like starting a month late. Yeah. I feel like they could have just hired you a month earlier. Is all I'm getting at. Uh, no, I mean like, and and it would have been nice if they could, but again, I needed that certification test. So, so I, that's the thing. Like, I passed it on Friday. So they really wanted you, that they were willing to delay it a few weeks. Okay. I don't actually I know how any of this works. I, my whole game plan this whole throughout this whole process has been, like, I will just do what they told me to. <laughs> they were like, hey, you need to take this test. Okay. And they were like, hey, like, you got to do this. Okay. Hey, you're going to start the third week. Okay. Yeah, like, and I don't no, know how, no. like... Unfazed, like let's just I'm just rolling with it, you know. I don't know how uh the like the Georgia laws are, but some states I think you need like a master's degree in education to teach or something. Nah, okay, need is a weird word. In a, a lot of situations you won't get hired unless you have it. Or that, sure. Yeah, but you certainly don't need it. Well, I think in Maryland you do, that's why I was suggesting. Yeah, but like I heard people say that like you needed it in Georgia, and now that I'm in the weeds, it's like no, you don't need it. <laughs> so uh, you're right. I can't say for sure, but like, can you? Okay, what happens if there's ever like a teacher shortage? They're just gonna say like, ah, oh, fuck, no teachers for the kids. We're not allowed to hire anybody unless they have a master's degree in education. Yeah, I'm trying to look it up now, and I, I you might be right. It looks like it's just a bachelor's and it pass a test. Yeah, exactly. What's it? What's it? Out of curiosity, if you're allowed to talk about, it, what's the test on? I guess oh, just a generic. You, you can look up. The, well, okay. For me, it was subject specific. So, so actually, the reason why I had to take it before I could start is because my degree technically isn't in math. Yes. Right. Math related. I mean, yeah. Like I use all that stuff extensively, but. Technically, it doesn't say math, so the bureaucracy reigns. Um, yes. But no, it's just like general math stuff. Uh, I actually had to take two. There are two parts for math. Uh, uh, you know, I'm just going to be honest. So easy. <laughs> it, yeah. It was, like, it, it was crazy. It, it wasn't like a calculus test. Well, 30% of one of the tests was calculus. Okay. But I mean, I in a while. there was like, okay, it was the hardest question, calculus wise or calc one wise anyway, was like a, a one related rates problem that was like not that bad. Yeah, I could probably figure it out if I had to. Okay, yeah, test one is thirty percent number and quantity, forty <laughs> percent algebra. And 30% discrete math and calculus. 
They're asking you discreet, man. Well, I guess that's kind of... And then test two was 40% functions, 30% geometry, 30% probability and statistics. Honestly, for some of the stuff, it was nice to have like a little refresher. Like <laughs> It was um, a fun thing for you. <laughs> oh, no, no. I had a great time. You know, I actually realized, okay, if there was like some like marathon thing where you just had to take like a test that was questions like this for like 24 hours. Put in the Olympics. I, I, dude, I would do great. I, I could just, I, I just could eat these problems up. I fucking love, like, it, you know, rinky dink little math problems like this. It's awesome. Just like simplifying fractions just for fun. Do you remember the formula for conditional probability off the top of your head? I am not a big probability person. Okay, so that's a new I didn't take a statistics class. I also never took a statistics class. Yes, but you also have two degrees in economics, which I feel is better <laughs> for probability related things. Yeah, I remember <laughs> on the first day of econometrics, I showed up class, obviously. And then at the end, I told my professor, like, hey, just so you know, I may need like a little help or ask some weird questions because I've never taken a statistics class before. And she just looked at me and she goes, how are you in this class? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. It's not required for an economics degree? At Georgia Tech? I, I skirted it. It is. You skirted it. Okay. Yep. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, I don't take a, because we don't, I mean, we use statistics, but we don't really use probability in, in chemical engineering. I mean, not to the level that you would learn. Right. Oh, you don't have to do arena modeling? <laughs> It's crazy you don't. Well, and I don't even do chemical engineering now, too. So, so. Yeah, who uses their None degree? Of None of it matters. Well, yeah. I will say my degree did help me. I've talked about this before because I, I also have a like an entry exam for my job. Mm. And there were some people coming out of the test that were like, man, I forgot the formula for a circumference for a circle. What? I was like, I was like what? <laughs> Dude, that you're is not your for, degree. You're applying for this job. This was a math major that said that. <laughs> Okay, to like, be fair, uh, I had to look up some weird formula. I actually didn't need them, but, <clears throat> like, do you remember, like, surface area of a triangular cone? Uh, I could probably figure it out. It's Fucking pi r squared, cool. right? So pi r squared. Okay. And then you just unwrap the cone. Okay. So you, you need, like, the, the length or height, if you want to say. Yeah. Times, probably times the diameter. Or not diameter, sorry, times the circumference, that's what I meant. Yeah, you're pretty close. And then you have to divide by three. Okay, divide by three, sure. Yeah, but, then, yeah I got and the And then you also add them. That's what I meant, Just, I add, yeah. Okay, yeah, the, yeah. That's what I meant, yeah. Pi R squared okay, plus yeah, the two pi <laughs> IR times the length. Divide I also didn't know surface area of a sphere. Four thirds pi r cubed. No, that, that's the volume. <laughs> oh yeah, see, you thought you fucking knew, didn't you? I I did need to know these for the test that I took, not the cone one, but I think I needed to know. This. I think I need to know the volume of the sphere. Well, and yeah, that that is four thirds. Yeah. And surface area is like two pi oh, r. Wait, times wait, wait, time out. Is is surface area just like differentiate the volume for a sphere? Uh, no. Why no. not? It's four, it's four pi r squared. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> wow. Wait, is that always true? I think it is, area, volume is usually, uh, I think I, I've looked this up before, because I think I noticed this in like, in like, uh, when I took calculus, I was like, man, these formulas are just... Fucking mind. So you really only need to know one of those. No way, that, this can't be right. Okay. It might not always be true. Oh, that's a crazy coincidence, though, then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I don't know how Do you think it's a coincidence? Like, 
Dude, think about a cylinder. That would make no fucking sense. But is it a coincidence, or is it something about the sphere? I don't know. Oh, no, it's definitely something about the sphere. Yeah. I meant it would be a crazy coincidence. No, wait. Oh, shit. I don't know what I meant. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, my mind was just blown, so now I'm all turned around. All right. I got to do some shit and then get ready. Anyway, you have to start it. You have homework. To, uh, no, not to yet. Write I am going to have homework this week. Fuck. Yeah, you got work. Getting uh, for the first day. And rest so you're going to be of many children. You're, you're going to be off the air for a while, is that what you're saying? I don't know. I don't know what I'm like. I think my first week's going to be pretty crazy. I think I'm going to be like Looney Tunesing the railroad track in front of the train as it's are you being gonna, operated. Are you going to do the thing where you pull out the chair and you turn it around, and you sit in the chair backwards? <laughs> you're like, <laughs> I'm just like you guys. You know? That's how you know shit's going down. Yeah. Are you be watching a lot of like high school movies? High school teaching movies? Well, uh, dude, half my classes are going to be like SI sessions. Oh, you're going to do like it that way? Up. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to like do a lecture day and then do an SI day. Like, uh, is that the thing that the school does or you're just doing it? because you're, No, I'm going to do that. You do. And if okay. they say you don't do that, I'm going to go rogue. going to go rogue. All right. Well, I'll let you go. Uh, thanks for coming on. We'll get an update about the teaching, maybe in a couple yeah. months. Dude, it's gonna go great. My coworker, like, we were talking about it one day, and she was asking all these questions. She was like, "You're not nervous at all, are you?" Like, nope, not nervous one bit. It's gonna, it's gonna be awesome. I'm really excited. All right, thanks for coming on.